G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. I'm Jesse. And I'm Drew Z. And today, we're giving you... Just the Tips. G'day guys, welcome back to a very special episode of Just the Tips. Post-derby demolition on behalf of the Eagles, clapping the cheeks of young Drewsy's Fremantle. <laughs> nah, that was a very demoralising L to take. The result, not so much of a hard task to take. You know, we're obviously going to lose to the Eagles, but the way we just bent over and just got clapped. Mm, and then a derby happened. But today we're looking at round eight, of course, and uh, there's a few juicy matchups. We do this every week, but it is headlined by a grand final replay between Richmond and Geelong on the Friday night at the MCG. So I'm very excited. Are you going to stream that on the Truzy channel? No, I will be streaming another mouth-watering contest between the Melbourne Demons and the Sydney Swans. Sydney have been a voodoo side for Melbourne over the years. So Ooh. MCG Saturday night. And of course, we've got the showdown as well, which are just a few of the very mouth-watering games this round, which we are about to discuss in full detail. But as we always do, we need to go through the tipping results from this week. And unfortunately, while my team won the derby, which is the only thing that matters, uh, you did clap my cheese in terms of tipping. So we're going to take a look at it. You have moved up to sixth position with a score of six. I am still on 36, which is terrible because I was making good momentum. Just starting to climb back, uh, but going two tips behind you again. I trail by nine and I'm 359th in a comp that is growing. We got over 500 people now. So if you want to join, you still can uh, join through the link in the description. Dad Watch, he has moved up to 41. I think he beat me by a tip this round, which sucks, um, but he's still outside the top 100 in 109th. In terms of the round winner, we're going to shout out ESPN fan 92792507. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, <laughs> he tipped eight uh, with a margin of 11, so great tip. No one got a perfect nine in the comp, um, but again, I recommend changing your username so he'll give you a proper shout out, and that goes as well for the tipping leader, ESPN fan 926832, who I believe was the one that was winning a few weeks ago as well, mm. so real consistent tipping 47 correct tips to lead the league and similarly the fantasy winner uh sean carr you gonna cry um with the name that scares me every time has an average of 2016 so really got a stranglehold on that top spot so great play from sean carr there a real western bulldogs of a number there for him it really is i think it was 2018 not long ago if i'm not mistaken so pulling out the premiership years this is bad content <laughs> manscape brings you today's just the tips episode if you haven't forgotten uh true footy 20 all caps all one word and you get 20 percent off and free shipping if you use that discount code they have amazing ball grooming uh not just the the lawnmower 3.0 the shaver uh which has got a ceramic blade for incident free nut shaving uh but also they've got some awesome products as well like a, a deodorant and a ball toner and a moisturizer as well that all comes with the perfect package 3.0 so do go check them out they make this show possible and uh, they have a great product as well. Shave your balls, use the best products, manscaped.com. And one more plug before we start the tipping. I'm going to say that I'm finally uploading on TikTok. So go check that out. It's just true footy on TikTok. Serotonin incoming, baby. Yeah, those views really help the dopamine. Let's get into it. We've got Richmond versus Geelong, the aforementioned grand final replay at the MCG on Friday night. We did see the Tigers with a dustyless team take on the Dogs. We saw the Dogs skip out to a four goal lead, I think in the second term. Uh, you were live streaming and you saw Richmond sort of overcome them in their premiership sort of style with they, where they kind of just mauled them with their defensive pressure and really choked them. We see a Richmond that is starting to sort of resemble, you know, the premiership teams of 17, 19 and 20, where they looked a bit flat, had the doubters and then come out and beat one of the top teams of the comp. So they're mm -hmm. looking really good. Geelong, on the other hand, blew a lead against uh, Sydney. I think they led most of the game, if I'm not mistaken. 26 more inside 50s for the Swans. And although they had an unlucky decision go against them in the dying minutes, that was a poor four points to lose. And karma in that because they should have had a result taken away from them from Brisbane a couple of weeks ago. I don't know if there's a little bit of doubt over Cochin. He's listed as a hamstring injury, so not sure how serious it is. But um, with him and Dusty maybe in or out, who are you vibing for this game? Richmond. I think it's a pretty easy tip, to be honest. Geelong have looked diabolical at stages, giving up that lead after how many 26 more inside 50s than the other team. They have all the tools they need. They just can't put it together. At the G, Richmond looking good again. I reckon Richmond get it done by 38 points. Mm, that would be a big win. I'm thinking along the very similar lines. Obviously, Cochin and Dusty in or out does make a big difference. i got a feeling they're both going to be fit just because it's such a big game. And I think they're going to win this by 28 points. They generally beat Geelong. Their head-to-head, -head, I think, really favours Richmond over the last few years. Shy Bolton really up in the absence of Darcy last week playing yes. through the middle um, yeah so yeah maybe you know Darcy he'll be back but Cochin out they have players to come in next up we travel to Sydney at Giants Stadium the Giants are hosting Essendon a team that's uh, notoriously hard to read this year but I think they're starting to settle down back where you know, sort of in the bottom reaches the ladder, falling short of uh, Carlton in one of the games of the year last round. Uh, we'll talk about the Giants, though. Jesse Hogan was a big in for them this week, uh, much to your chagrin. Uh, <laughs> kicked, kicked four goals and uh, didn't look out of place at all. 
uh, showcase some of the talent we know he has. They've won three of the last four, uh, although I think Daniels and Buntine um, probably in doubt for this week with uh, some, some injuries there. In terms of injuries for Essendon, I think Cox out for the Dons and not in a good way. Uh, that is a bit of a blow, but nonetheless. But the fact that they you know came short against Carlton um, was a bit of an underwhelming response. I think Essendon was capable of more. I tipped him. You did tip Carlton last week uh, to your credit. So who do you think is going into this game as favourite? Could not tell you. Could not really? tell you. Yeah. Well, Essendon have looked really good in some some games this season. They were stiff to not win against that game uh, against Carlton yesterday. Sorry. GWS are back into form though. It is at their home ground. I think the safe tip is GWS because they had a big win last week. Narrow loss to Bulldogs the week before that. So they're probably coming back into a bit of form. Essendon beat Collingwood. GWS beat Collingwood. So there's a bit of a match up there. But I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Who are you thinking? I'm actually very confident in the Giants, which means Essendon will win. <laughs> I'm thinking the Giants will win this by about 26. Okay. I'll say the Giants. Now the Giants absolutely made a, a statement, you could almost say, with a bigger away win against Adelaide. I think they're back. I think they're back. They're playing the quality football we know they're capable of. Um, haven't really taken too much of a backward step. They had a bad last quarter against the Dogs where they got you know, pumped, but the dogs are the dogs. Um, overall, I think it's good signs for the Giants. Next up, we have uh, a game that I'm finding pretty hard to tip. Gold Coast hosts St. Kilda at Metricon. If I'm not mistaken, they've had some pretty good clashes there over the years as well. Um, a couple of close games, maybe a comeback game from St. Kilda, if I'm not mistaken. I think the last four between St. Kilda and Gold Coast have been under six points, potentially. Really? Maybe. Wow. I could be making that up. Yeah, we do kind of just like to rattle off stats <laughs> without checking here, but I do think there is, um, there is a history of close games here. Gold Coast coming off one of the better wins of their history, you could almost say, in terms of significance to beat Collingwood at the G even though the, the Pies are struggling um, it's something they haven't done before and to, to win at the G is, is very impressive in fact was it their first win at the G ever I think no wasn't it no you sure yeah they beat Melbourne at the G before and Hawthorne Rats. That aside, um, it was a really good performance. They've strung two really good wins together um, after beating Sydney by 40 points the week before. Josh Corbett comes into the side, kicks four. as a nice little foil mm. for you know Ben King up there as well. On the Saints side of the ledger, typically hard to read this year with a big win over the Hawks um, in a game that, given St. Kilda's four lines before that, they weren't necessarily a guaranteed win. So um, to win that convincingly, it's like, okay, so there is the normal St. Kilda underneath there somewhere. Uh, we saw Brad Hill, uh, 27 touches and 85%, a welcome return to form. And Jones, had two goals and 37 touches which is probably one of his best career games so mm. uh, who are you thinking for this one? Still don't know still don't know Gold Coast yeah played really well against Collingwood but it's Collingwood St Kilda played really good against Hawthorne but it's Hawthorne mm. don't know <laughs> I'm going to let Drew go first on this one as well it's a tough one I feel like this is really winnable for Gold Coast but uh, I'm thinking St Kilda narrowly I think it'll be a bit of a heartbreaker for Gold Coast St Kilda I feel like generally win those close games that we mentioned before yeah I'm going to tip them by four points I think Gold Coast are easy to just brush off because they they're are. Gold Coast. You feel a bit dirty tipping Gold Coast sometimes. You're like, oh, that's brave. Yeah. St. Kilda have been showing some really hot and cold form this year. They were hot last week. Fuck it. I'll back Gold Coast. Gold Coast by eight points. Next up, we have a clash for the ages. North Melbourne versus Collingwood at the at the Marvel Stadium, rather. Um, it is 17th versus 18th. The sides have one win between them in 14 games because uh, we're up to round eight now. So, yeah, real stinky scenario. North Melbourne coming off a, a sort of Honourable loss against the D's, who are obviously the only undefeated team now, in Hobart in a, a ground they played pretty well in, um, which didn't surprise me, and obviously the D's were too strong, but nonetheless some encouraging form there. And the Pies had one of their worst losses in, God, maybe a decade? I don't know. I, off the top of my head, Pies fans will be able to tell me, but I think the significance, the symbolism of losing the Gold Coast at the G, um, this is a new low for them. So is this the week that North Melbourne potentially put a nail in the coffin of Nathan Buckley? Because I think he could easily get sacked if they lose this. Yeah, I think if they do lose this, he gets sacked. Come on, look at these lists, man. Like, that Collingwood team is so stacked. I know it's, at the end of the day, it's 18 versus 18 on the field, but fuck, come on. You've got so many All-Australians in there, generational mm. talents in that Collingwood side, coming up against a borderline VFL side in North Melbourne, just about. Collingwood have to win this. Have have to win this. I tipped them last week against Gold Coast, and Gold Coast blitzed them, pretty much. So, you know, I'm going to have faith in Collingwood for potentially the last time if they don't come through for me. So, Collingwood, lift. I'll tip you by 19 points. This game will be decided by who's hungrier because sometimes when a bottom team who hasn't had a win especially gets a sniff of a potential win, they just play out of their skins. And that has the potential to happen for North. It also has the potential to happen for Collingwood here who desperately need a win. 
I'm gonna tip Collingwood, who I think are the better team, by 18 points. Next up, we have a tasty clash. We got the Melbourne Demons, currently undefeated, coming up against the Sydney Swans, coming off the back of a really good win. The Ds held off a pretty um, strong North Melbourne side. I think it was at 20 points they trailed by at one point in the third quarter there, um, as my stat man reliably informs me. Obviously didn't catch the game, but uh, on paper it kind of went not unexpectedly for me. North, as we just talked about, are good in Hobart. So um, the fact that Melbourne were able to finish with a mature sort of win and, and their ability to run out four quarters, that's a really big plus for them. And now Sydney as well kind of almost stole one, you'd say, against the Cats. Not even really focusing on the you know the non-mark pay to Jeremy Cameron. Uh, he he might have missed that anyway because mm. he would have had to kick it on the, the harsh yeah. angle. But it's more the fact that they conceded 26 more inside 50s than they actually had of their own. So uh, it was a game that they were lucky to win in some respects, but ultimately it's, it's about who takes their opportunities. And uh, it was a good response after a really bad loss last week. So uh, in terms of team news, I think Tomlinson is, has done his ACL, so he's yeah. going to be out. Jack Viney, I believe, is also not playing for this game. So who you think is going to win the G. I will tip uh, Melbourne. One thing I would like to say was, was Ben Brown's first game as a D. He kicked two. Mm -hmm. um, but one big talking point I thought was Bailey Fritch kicked six goals. Having another key forward in there is just going to free up these guys, which we've talked about avenues to goal. It's not necessarily going through the guys that have come in, but by having the better defenders go to the to Ben Brown, it's going to free up Wiedemann and Fritch as well. Yeah. So yeah, Cozzy Pickett had another really good game. I'm just going to tip Melbourne for this one. Although in their last 10, Melbourne have only beat the Swans once. Mm. So a bit of a voodoo team. Um, I will be streaming this and you will be there if all goes to yeah, plan. Yeah, potentially, buddy. I will tip Melbourne to win this by 23 points. This game, like so many others, has a stank of an upset. Um, there's been so many this year mm. and uh, obviously Melbourne... You know, when you win so many games in a row, there's always a chance for an upset. Uh, so I could definitely see it happening, but I'll go conservative. Melbourne by 21. Talking about upsets, Sydney are the biggest upsetting side this, this season, I think. Mm. Beating Brisbane, uh, beating... Richmond. Richmond. And then Geelong. And Geelong. Robbing Peter to pay poor, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> That's not even ad remotely correct. <laughs> now, continuing the trend of crosstown derbies, we got Port Adelaide hosting Adelaide in the showdown, um, and this one looks, you know, far more one-sided than people would have said the the derby would have been. Although we know how that turned out. On the Port Adelaide side of the ledger, I uh, had a really disappointing away loss to the Lions at the Gabba, uh, a ground they're notoriously. I wouldn't say bad at, but uh, uh, their last few clashes against the Lions, when they've been good, haven't really fallen their way. On the Crows side of it, really disappointing home loss against the Giants. I actually think that's far more disappointing from an Adelaide perspective than, than the Port loss, to be honest, mm -hmm. um, especially when you consider Boak was out. The Crows have now lost three on the bounce and starting to fall back to where people sort of expected. They've played some good football through patches, but uh, it's not really holding up right now. So... At the moment, I think this is one-sided. How are you feeling about it? It's going to be similar to the Derby, to be honest, because obviously the Derbies have so much riding on them, so both teams come out with a lot of in intensity, and there's a couple goal swings both ways, usually in the first few quarters of games like this, but I think, yeah, Port Adelaide will just end up running them out. The inexperienced Adelaide side, I reckon Port will end up winning by about 43. Yeah, I'll back you in there. I'll say Port Adelaide by 54. Ooh. Now we're finally into the Sunday games. Let's take a look at Hawthorne versus the West Coast Eagles at the MCG. Hawthorne were terrible against the Saints. Um, a game I had a sneaky feeling they would upset the Saints because, you know, how the Saints have been this year. Um, and Hawthorne did not deliver at all. But they haven't, they haven't been terrible this year, but they've also certainly not been good. That loss is probably their worst of the yeah. year off the top of my head. So really disappointing from their perspective. Uh, and the Eagles, on the other hand... Um, uh, quite undermanned going into the derby. A lot of people wrote them off and they came back and, you know, made an absolute statement like a bank. Probably Eagles' best performance of the year, as you've said, just purely because they played full four quarters. Yeah. They did not take their foot off the pedal. Even when the Dockers kept coming back with goals, the Eagles would answer. They were going back and forth, the Dockers and West Coast. Um, but yeah, West Coast, the Eagles just ran it out and uh, won quite comfortably. But yeah, I think this should be a quite an easy win for West Coast. First game at the MCG this season? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, it is. So it'd be good to get some of the players out there running about on the uh, on the Geeston. I'll say West Coast win this one quite easily. Uh, I'll go 39 points. Yeah, there's, uh, well, that is actually a big win. I I'm a little bit more reluctant than that because I just think we struggle to put Hawthorne away. They do generally play well against us. I think we haven't played at the G since 2019, so a little bit of rust in there as well. Um, but we've got Brass and Hearn probably back in. I think McGovern will be another week out. And there's not too many players on the Hawthorne list that... That really scare me. So I'd be very, very gutted if we drop this game. 
I'll tip us to win by 21 points. Now in the penultimate game of the round, we've got the Bulldogs hosting Carlton at Marvel Stadium. The Bulldogs are coming off a disappointing and it'll be a bit bitter uh, to lose to Richmond in the manner that they did after you know getting a four goal lead, undefeated to that point and a chance to really test themselves against the best and they fell a fair way short, losing by four goals. Carlton, on the other hand, are coming off against a very satisfying win against a, a rival team in Essendon. Some are saying it's the game of the year, probably one of the most high scoring games off the top of my head. Um, it was like 134 to 116 or something silly. So really Really good end-to-end -end footy. I'd just expect the Bulldogs to come back into form with this one after their first loss. We know how good they've been. Bulldogs will probably end up clapping Carlton, to be honest. Really? Although, well, Carlton usually do compete no, no matter what team they play against, other than Port Adelaide. But yeah, Carlton will probably put up a good fight, but I just think the Bulldogs will get this done. It is at Marvel. Does that play a factor into either team's hands? I think the Dogs are a pretty good Marvel team. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, I'll just tip the Bulldogs by 30 points. It's worth mentioning Harry Mackay, who um, I left out of my surprise All-Australian teams because I, I, he's really played well since <laughs> since I recorded it as well. Um, he's really continued that form. I think he's second to the Coleman, and at the moment, he's got an All-Australian spot locked up. So that has been a really good plus side for Carlton this year. That being said... I'm going to agree with you. I think the Dogs will come back and win by 37. I think, yeah. I think they'll um, they'll touch them. Final game of the round, we've got your boys, Fremantle, taking on the Brisbane Lions at Optus Stadium, which is going to be a significant test. Fremantle obviously fell short against West Coast. I thought they, they played with a good intensity in the first half and were neck and neck in all the key stats. And then, uh, I don't know if it was injuries. I think fatigue certainly played a, a large part of it. Ethan Hughes went out, and obviously Luke Ryan wasn't available um, somewhat last minute. But uh, yeah, the boys just ran out of legs. Coming up against Brisbane, who made a big statement by... Uh, clapping Port Adelaide who were obviously a, quite a big contender this year it has to be said and they did so without Lockie Neal as well so they're starting to as I've said look more like the team we know they're capable of how confident are you of an upset win here and I'd say it's an upset here because I think Brisbane are the favourites how confident are you feeling? I'm going to tip the Dockers oh yeah yeah interesting I don't know I like Dockers versus Brisbane it's always a good game last year I think we only lost by I think it was less than a goal the year before that Walters won it after the siren that's true that, that uh, that point. So yeah, I don't know. We stack up well against the Lions, and obviously without Lockie Neal, it's going to play into our hands. Our back line looked really disjointed without Luke Ryan, though. Every entry that West Coast had, there was just players everywhere, like options everywhere for you to kick to. That was probably the best half we played that first half all season, I thought. Every time the Eagles scored, we'd respond. Mm. Um, we are hitting leads. We are making the most of our opportunities as well. So we are playing really well in that first half, but just got fatigued. We got seven days to recover to get ready for Brisbane. And I'm going to tip the Doctors to win. Could be a blockbuster, and I could absolutely stink this tip up. But we, we are okay at home. Like We are a decent home side. And yeah, I just fancy the Dockers to get this one done for whatever reason. It probably sounds like a stupid tip to most people, but I'll tip the Dockers, um, and I'll tip them by 12 points. I like it. I, I, I can definitely see Fremantle winning this game. They're definitely good enough to. And the what I like also like to look at is how teams play certain stadiums. I just, it just occurred to me while we were talking, Brisbane have never played West Coast at, the, at Optus. So True. all the times Brisbane have gone to Optus, they've done so against Fremantle. Uh, it's a tough one. I, I think Brisbane still at the moment with their momentum and the fact that you know their average start means they're, they're not quite playing for their season, but there's a real sense of urgency to win. I think this is going to be a real good game, but I think Brisbane are going to win by seven points. Yeah, it's the safe tip. But mm. I don't know, Doc is at home, man. Who's your upset off the week then? Did I just say mine? Frio? Yeah, all right. Yeah. I guess that counts. My upset of the round, probably Sydney beating Melbourne. Uh, I think yeah. Melbourne are comfortably better side, but you know sometimes teams have a big win streak and then they drop the bundle for no reason. So um, I'll, I'll say that one because Sydney have proven they can beat some good teams this year. All right, guys, that wraps up just the tips for yet another week. Let us know in the comments what you think of our tips, who's going to do better this round, and also what your tips are for this round. Don't forget you can join our tipping and our fantasy comp in the description below. Do go check out AR TikTok, but also our sponsors, manscaped.com, for all your ball shaving needs. And our new Instagram page. Of course, I was going to mention that before you reminded me. Go to DrewFooty underscore on Instagram. That way you can contribute to the Drew Footy Show on Drew's channel. So go subscribe to that and take part in all the weekly fun. As well as all of our clips. So, you know, get the snippets, get the gold nuggets out of this shit. Clip the tips. <laughs> but enough about Manscaped. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.